Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to VUX World, the practical voice podcast. This episode of VUX World is brought to you by The Moment Pebble. Now, I know that we spend a lot of time talking about technology on this podcast and how voice technology in particular can enrich our lives and make us all a lot more happier and more productive, but technology in general, certainly the smartphone, has actually caused an increase in stress and anxiety and lots of other mental health problems for people all across the world and the people at moment pebble are trying to reverse that with their product the moment pebble funnily enough um which is essentially uh, it brings mindfulness into your day now if any of you have tried mindfulness before then you may not have stuck with it. Some people might have, some people might not have. I've tried it before, and I've tried it on the uh, Apple Watch. And the problem with the Apple Watch is that it buzzes, and it reminds you to be mindful and do some breathing, but it doesn't do it at the right time, the most convenient time. So you find yourself just ignoring it, and it just doesn't catch on. The Moment Pebble, is a, it's a specific thing it's a, it's an object it's a, essentially a pebble that you can hold in your pocket next to your smartphone and every time you reach into your pocket you can have a reminder there to be mindful and send to yourself and just take yourself away from the daily stresses um just for a moment just for 30 seconds or so and over the course of the day stress tends to build up so if you can use this uh, use the moment pebble throughout your day whenever you can feel a little bit stressed or whenever it feels as though things are becoming uh, building up what have you then it, it it can actually help reduce stress throughout the day it stops stress from peaking uh, as the day goes on it's a fantastic product you should check it out it's on kickstarter right now and you can check it out by going to momentpebble.com that's momentpebble.com and the link is in the show notes This episode is also brought to you by the Conversational Academy. I get asked all the time, where can I go to learn conversation design? Or where can I go to learn voice user interface design? And I've always been a little bit struggling because there's not that many courses out there. Quite a lot of them require you to go travel and travel to a a specific location at a specific time of the week. Um, But the Conversational Academy is what I would recommend from now on. Essentially, it's all online. It's a series of videos and questions and answers and tests and stuff like that. So, you, But you can work through it at your own pace. Um, it's done by Hans Van Dam of Robocopy, who we've had on the podcast before, talking about conversation design. So you've, he's probably already taught you a thing or two. And if you haven't checked that episode out, I would definitely recommend to go back and check it out because he does drop a few hints as to what you can expect in the course. And the course takes you through literally beginning to end of how to design for conversations right the way through from the theory of conversation design through to the discovery phase and choosing the appropriate technology and understanding user needs and business needs right the way through to the design practices and the delivery as well definitely worth checking it out go to the show notes of this podcast episode either on the video world website or in your podcast player and you'll find the link to the conversational academy there i would definitely recommend that you check that out On today's episode of VUX World, Dustin and myself are joined by Mark Webster, now at Adobe, running the product side of things on the Adobe XD team, ex-founder of Sayspring. If you cast your mind back to last year, Sayspring was acquired by Adobe, one of the first big moves by one of the big companies in the voice space, and I think Sayspring probably was one of the first voice startups uh, to be acquired by a large company. They've integrated Sayspring into Adobe XD, and now you can prototype voice interfaces through Adobe XD. There's multi-modal design in there. There's all kinds of things and challenges uh, that they're working on solving around situational design and stuff like that. So today is absolutely fascinating conversation. We get into the details of Adobe XD. For those of you that haven't used it before, we'll give you a little bit of a run through about how voice plays a part in Adobe XD and the value that it can bring. We also talk about some of the real challenges that we're facing in the voice space right now. 80,000 apps on Alexa, four years in, still struggling to get people into those apps, still struggling to get people to come back to those skills and actions uh, to engage with them more often and and really struggling to put voice assistants and the voice assistant platforms into the position that they're touted to be, which is the companion, your everyday assistant that helps you do everyday things. Most people are still in that first party interaction stuff and the third party skills that can 
can add the value and not really being used that much. So we discussed that challenge as well and how, in, from Mark's perspective, design, good design, could be the solution. We talk about some of the design mistakes he's noticed and some of the real uh, challenges that need to be overcome from a design perspective. It's an absolutely fascinating podcast. You're going to absolutely love it. Dustin and myself had a blast. It really brings some new and fresh thinking to the design process and to the voice space in general. Really, really uh, fascinating conversation. This is Mark Webster on VUX World. VUX World. VUX World. VUX World. VUX World. Branding with the big faces. I love listening to it. Kane Sims. Kane Sims. Kane Sims, the one and only. Britain's finest, Mr. Kane Sims. Dustin. Dustin. Dustin Coates. I like it when you guys are together and talking about boys. Without further ado, welcome to the show. Double check the recording. Set the backup one roll in. <clears throat> And we are rolling. Mark Webster, welcome to VUX World. Thanks for having us. It's really exciting. Wow, it's been a long time coming. You, there's a few people who've had on the podcast. I think Amy Stapleton's one of them. Um, and there's a couple of other people as well who are one of the first few people that I ever come across on Twitter when I first kind of got into this sort of stuff. And you and Say Spring were one of them. So it, I'm absolutely over the moon that we've got to do this. Yeah, that's great. It's funny. I think Amy was actually our first piece of customer feedback. We had really? She was really early user of Sayspring, yeah. Wow. What about you, Dustin? Did you get much uh, use on Sayspring? Yeah, a bit. You know, this is clearly one of these success stories in voice. So really looking to hearing what you have to say today, Mark. Okay, great. So help us out then. Is Sayspring still a thing? Because I know that you've got still a website up and running. Is Sayspring still a thing, or is that now totally and purely part of Adobe? So today, Sayspring is still a thing. Uh, there's still people using it every day. As soon as we got acquired into Adobe, which was last April, uh, we put an invite wall in front of it to request access to it, uh, mainly to be able to handle the amount of traffic the the Adobe stage was going to bring to us compared to the say spring stage. Uh, and we've been letting more and more people in. Um, but back in October, we released voice prototyping in Adobe XD. And so our effort will definitely be in other Adobe products over time. Uh, say spring is still a product for now. Um, but you know, we'll sort of see what the future of, the, of say spring as its own independent platform is over time. Okay, so you obviously founded Sayspring, um, and yeah, as Justin mentioned, you know one of the one of the probably the first success story really that we've seen, um, you know, a big kind of company acquiring um, a startup. So you were the, you were the founder over there. What what do you do now then at, at Adobe? What's what's your kind of role as part of that kind of acquisition and as part of rolling out Sayspring into other areas of Adobe? What is it that you are doing at the moment? Yes, I'm a director of product within Adobe XD. Uh, so bringing voice prototyping into XD was our first mandate. You know, our team has been working on XD as a platform since we got here. Uh, we rolled out additional language support, so now it's offered around the world. Uh, we're also working currently on an integration with Alexa, which we had done a sneak preview of back in October uh, that should be launching by the end of May. Uh, so, you know, when we think of the problems that designers have when it comes to working with voice, uh, it's the same problems Adobe has internally in that designers haven't really had access to the medium of voice and speech to use in their digital experience work. Uh, we're going to see more voice initiatives happen throughout Adobe in lots of different products. And part of my mandate is to help shepherd what that strategy will be. Uh, but even for us as designers, Internally, we need the kinds of tools that now Adobe XD offers in order to figure out and design and prototype those experiences. So we're sort of both our own customer and the team leading this stuff. For those who are unfamiliar with it, what is Adobe XD? Yeah, so Adobe XD is Adobe's uh, design and prototyping solution for UI and UX designers. So over the last couple of years, the process of product design uh, has really become design first. So the way a project will typically kick off in uh, a team, in an organization, will be the kinds of things we're familiar, 
with like wireframes and then moving into a higher fidelity design and then using tools like Adobe XD to put together interactive prototypes, be able to share those prototypes with stakeholders, get feedback on it, iterate on that, and really not begin development until you're happy with what the user experience is going to be. You've done user testing, and you've gotten feedback from other people in the organization. So that has, and Adobe XD has typically been focused on uh, screen design and visual design. And introducing voice was really an acknowledgement that voice is going to become part of every digital experience. Sometimes it will be on a voice platform like Alexa or Google Assistant. Sometimes it will be strictly voice input with something like Spotify's mobile voice search. Uh, and then sometimes it will be, you know, say a, a kiosk touchscreen that has audio and speech as part of the, the playback experience. Right, so really thinking about voice and speech as interfaces, not so much as, say, a, an assistant. And now what is your team seeing most often? Are people most often using uh, Adobe XP for voice for the assistants, or are they most often using it in these mobile experiences or even desktop experiences like you were mentioning? So for the most part, the people that have been using it have been using it for platform specific work. So like an Amazon Alexa, like Google Assistant, uh, more and more we're seeing people use it for mobile, uh, really to add you know, mobile search as part of what that experience is gonna be. Or if you were putting together a chat experience, right? There's a speech output that may be part of that. So something like you using Google Assistant on the phone where you know, you're sort of both typing and speaking to it and it has a visual display that's part of it, also speech that's part of that playback experience. Uh, but when we launched in October, we also launched a, a UI kit for Amazon Alexa so that designers had access to all the templates, all the kinds of objects that you have in uh, now Alexa presentation language APL. Uh, so we released that back in October. It's been downloaded over 15,000 times uh, so you know, people are using that to figure out what the user experience should be before making big upfront investments in this platform. So does that so you mentioned that Adobe XD started out started out as like a visual sort of UI prototyping tool? Can you prototype a voice experience of some description without the visual, or is this purely a, a visuals and voice hand in hand? You can use it solely for voice. What's fascinating is it completely changes the way you use Adobe XD. So mo much like a lot of design tools, there's a concept of an artboard. The artboard is usually there to represent the screen, right? And you put the design uh, on, that, on that artboard. But when you do voice first design, you essentially use the artboards as storyboards. And so we're actually working on a whole design approach with uh, the Amazon Alexa voice design team uh, called situational design. I don't know if you've seen Paul Kutzinger talk about this at all at, at Amazon, uh, but really using those artboards as storyboards for the conversation where the entire initial experience isn't actually looking at the screen. It's really just using artboards and the canvas to walk through the experience with text that you can then add interactivity to. And then further down the design process, you can then add visuals if you were gonna, you know, support devices like the Amazon Echo Show. So it's fascinating to see people doing voice first design that doesn't include any screen visuals and completely changing what the use case for the artboard is. That's one that was one of my questions I was gonna get to is how how do you uh, cope with or do you encourage or is there a way around the whole kind of tree-based design because that's what Paul Kutzinger's philosophy is isn't it and I know that the the chaps at Pulse Labs have spoke about that uh, when they were on the podcast last year um, is uh, is that kind of the philosophy is moving away from that tree-based design and, and trying to make things more uh, situational and fluid and how does XD sort of support that if it is? Yeah, I mean, I think what's interesting about Paul's approach and, and that advocacy around situational design is that as designers, we so often think of the user journey and the optionality that a user has at each step of that journey, 
right? So even visual design will typically start with something that looks like a flow chart or a, a site tree for a website. Uh, thinking about you know, how you can jump in and out of different parts of the experience in a nonlinear way and thinking about a design approach that, that isn't based on necessarily a, a linear user journey uh, is definitely something that we as a creative community need to figure out, you know, whether it is situational design, whether it's some other variant of it, I think is yet to be determined. Uh, but I think what I, what I really appreciate about that approach is the acknowledgement that we need to rethink what design with voice is, right? We have, even today, you know, we, we say a lot of the same things about what voice design is, right? It's the most human way we communicate, that it's the first time that uh, the interface will have to adapt to us as humans versus uh, us as, as people, you know, adapting to the keyboard or the mouse. Uh, and we've used this metaphor of conversation and we don't really know if any of that's true. Right? That's kind of the starting point of what, of the way we're digging into this. Uh, but it's maybe we're right. Maybe we got it right out of the gate, but maybe we haven't. And I think that the creative community is tasked with figuring out like what is a voice driven user experience. We don't really know. And the, way we're going to figure that out is giving the creative community access to the medium of voice. And so that's the way we're thinking about vision of XD. Let's, you know, let's pull back out of the actual technology, the specifics of the platform, the logic of variables and, and entities. Uh, and let's just focus on the user experience. Like what are we trying to do? What is a good experience? Why does every Alexa skill start with welcome to? Right, is the idea that I'm sort of walking into a space that somebody's greeting me, is that the right mental model we should be using for this? I don't think we know yet. And I think we're only gonna figure that out by, by designers continuing to work and iterate with voice to find out what works and find out what designers and users want out of these experiences. You mentioned, I mean, I think half of the, half of the, I mean, that's, you're right, that's how most skills start. Welcome to X, Y, Z. This skill is for, you know, A, B, C. You can say things like, you know, G, F, K or whatever. Um, I don't even know if those three letters go together in the alphabet, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get the gist. What what would be, and I mean, I don't know if you've developed your thinking on this at all, but what would be the some of the kind of alternative approaches to having that either welcome piece or, you know, what, what are some of the alternative approaches to some of the things you've just been describing? It could be a few. I mean, the first is the use of sound design and audio design as part of your experience. How does your brand brand sound? What does it feel like? And so lots of brands that are on television or on radio will have an audio package that's part of their branding package. Uh, so when we think of ear cons and stuff like Intel Inside, the McDonald's chimes, right, all the ways that we recognize a brand through the audio, Maybe that, maybe all I need to do is hear that chime to set the context that that chime is in lots of other places, other, other digital places where I interact with that brand. And that lets me know that that's why I'm there. Uh, you know, maybe there's a, a, a more narrow use case that we're going to start with. So maybe we don't give you three options. Maybe we just start with telling you your bank balance as a starting point, just to sort of pull you in and immediately provide information and over time see what the user is asking of that skill and then that skill adapts. If I come to a skill in three times in a row, I ask for my to schedule a payment, then you can probably assume the fourth time I'm going to do that. And then if not, give me a way to walk through that experience. Um, there's also a lot of digital experiences that I think it's worth digging into what is the right mental model of the user for. So I've never sent email by having a communication with somebody. Right? That's I've never had a conversation with my assistant to send a send a memo. Uh, that's a digital experience that burned in my brain of how to send an email. So maybe when I'm using Google Assistant to send an email, maybe the mental model that I should have in my head is the visual interface of Gmail. Maybe I can close my eyes and I can picture what Gmail looks like, what happens when I click compose, what happens when a new window comes up, 
the, the order of those form fields that are in there. Right? When it comes to Spotify, you know, I, I can't help but ask an artist's name through Alexa to play music and picture the top five songs for that artist that's at the top of the artist profile on desktop and mobile. Right, that there's so many experiences now where the visual digital experience is burned in our brain of what that looks like and how we navigate it, that maybe that's the better mental model. That maybe asking a person to perform this task for me is not the right mental model. And it sounds very unglamorous because it starts to sound, well, maybe that's a bunch of keywords, right? Maybe that starts to sound more like an IVR system in a way that freaks us out as designers. Uh, but I'm not convinced that the way we're all approaching it is, is the right way. And maybe I'm wrong, but I don't, also don't think that we in the voice community and in the broader creative community are having enough debate about, you know, what is the right way to do this and, and what, is, what provides a good user experience. Wow. <laughs> so let me just process some of that then. So <clears throat> I think on the, on the one hand, from what you finished up with there in terms of, um, you know, using existing mental models and applying that to voice. I think that um, obviously you're a creative person. Um, and I don't know whether that might be your creativity helping you get that straight in your mind. Do you know what I mean? Like if you, if, with the way you approach composing an email through voices to visualize Gmail and go through those kind of steps. For, for other people, they might, and that's probably part of the discovery problem is that how do you visualize what's happening when it's audible and maybe sound design plays a kind of a bit of a part in that. But I think that's probably one of the difficult parts. Is it not in that people might not necessarily know uh, what to expect or what a skill or an action or a voice assistant can do? Um, and is that is that the role of the welcome message at the moment is to try and frame what that thing can can do or is that are we talking primitive design still in, in that respect yeah i think that's a great point right that we as users all have different approaches to how we interact with a digital interface and some people are very visual some people will read the text on a screen some people won't but people behave very differently when they use different products um, that's why things like iterative design and user research becomes super important because depending upon who your audience is, that experience should probably be very different. A banking application that's meant to check balances is very different than a voice-driven trading platform that traders would use, you know, on the floor of the stock exchange. Like maybe because of that professional domain, there's a completely different way we should be thinking about that. Uh, when we think about all of these experiences across all these different users, different audiences, I don't think we can figure it out with, without a rigorous design process and the design approach and uh, taking what we've seen work in visual design and bringing that to voice. And so again, sort of looping back, that's the, what we see as our mission at XD for not only voice, but for all design that you need this toolkit to dig into these experiences to make them work. Uh, and we should take that process that we've used there and, and bring it over to voice and dig in. And the fact that every Alexa experience, and not to pick on Alexa, we're just using it because we're most, most familiar with them. Um, but maybe the fact that they're all the same is indicating the problem, right? That we pull off a template from GitHub for a quiz game to use as the starting point for our experience and that quiz game says welcome to quiz game and so then we just go in and we change the name and it says welcome to something else and because of the way we've approached it sort of development first and used these templates as the starting points it's actually just leading to this homogenous user experience across all these different kinds of voice applications uh, that is probably not ideal for the users that use them. Mm. What are your thoughts on this, Dustin? What's your, what's your kind of mental model when you approach, you know, using a, a voice assistant? That's a good question. I, my thoughts on this, I think Mark, you're raising some really interesting points. I think you're right. We, we do need to get some debate on this. We do need to, uh, to really 
question our assumptions. It seems like we are coalescing around some, uh, some assumptions pretty early on. Uh, and that's why I like tools like XD, obviously XD is a great tool even outside the voice side of it. Uh, but the fact that you're, you're building this that makes that, that prototyping time easier, I would imagine you're seeing with your customers that are using it. Uh, ultimately, they got a better pr project that they put together because they're able to, to prototype, put in front of people, prototype, put in front of people. Exactly. Right. That's that's the, the mission of tools like this as a starting point. And to be clear, I don't have all these answers. Right. I'm just a guy. So it's really more about, you know, I, I think the best approach to the best creative approach to product challenges comes from the community at large. Right. It comes from you know, pull down to refresh in mobile apps comes from a designer at Twitter who spent a whole bunch of time digging into a problem and came up with that approach and shared it with other people in the company and got feedback and that seemed exciting. And then that became something that got introduced into mobile and then that worked really well. So then a whole bunch of other apps start using it. And then we have that as a convention as designers to use that we, we don't have to rethink how do you get people to refresh on mobile? There's a way we all expect to do it. There was the hamburger menu of how you take a bunch of different options on a small mobile screen and roll them up in a way that uh, takes takes it out of the the limited real estate of mobile. And a designer did it and then it became a thing and then frameworks like Bootstrap support it. And then there's sort of ubiquity around that stuff. So different designers will solve these problems and they will all coalesce in what we consider front end frameworks for this and, and UX convention and UI convention that we as designers can use. But that stuff doesn't come without lots of people trying to tackle these problems in a creative way with the tools that they need to find the answers. And how much of Adobe's uh, mission, I would say, is providing the tool to help the community move this forward and how much is actually moving forward and providing the answers for the community through working with your customers or through your research? It's both. So broadly, you know, Adobe sees its mission as empowering creatives by giving them the tools that they need to express that creativity. So whether it's Adobe Illustrator or Premiere in video or Audition for audio, uh, providing the tools that creatives then use to create their work uh, is the way we've kind of approached it on the creative cloud side. We, because of that role and that responsibility, uh, we've been part of the design community for, you know, 30 years, uh, since way before I was here. <laughs> I've been an Adobe Tools user since the beginning of my career. Um, and what's interesting is to see the way XD has approached it is XD got really, really close to the user to build this product. So it started as about three years ago as something called Project Comet, and it was kind of built out in the open, getting feedback on the product, uh, you know, continuing to release new versions and getting feedback on that. It only went 1.0, you know, about 18 months ago. So it was at Adobe Max in 2017 was when it sort of officially launched. Uh, and the year that followed, 60 new features came out. To this day, Adobe XD does monthly releases, which even in a company like Adobe is unheard of. Right? This was originally a shrink wrap software company where we would ship a new version every year. We have this cloud business, uh, but a lot of our products stick to sort of what would seem more like a traditional release paradigm. And then XD just sort of came out of the gates and decided to do new versions every month. Uh, which also gives us a pace in here, which is uh, pretty incredible for a big company. You know, I've been in startups, I've been in big companies. Uh, there always tends to be a different pace in big companies compared to a startup where you feel like your hair is on fire every day. Uh, but the pressure, the, the healthy pressure of having monthly releases uh, makes us as a product team stay hyper-focused 
know we need to get things out, know that we have a responsibility to our users to get new things out every month. So it creates this drive within our product team that I think is rare to see in a big company. And I think the results kind of speak for themselves. Again, to see the pace of innovation of XD has been incredible as a, as a user first. And then something like introducing voice prototyping into a product one year after it went 1.0 at Adobe scale is kind of incredible. You, you don't think of a company as big and as mature as Adobe being that bleeding edge in the world of design. And we are right. That's what we're doing that in voice. You know, we have a, an entire immersive and augmented reality initiative that we're on the cutting edge of that. So, you know, I think it's, it's, in, it's incredibly part of this journey. It's been a lot of fun being here to get this stuff out the door. Uh, and I think the responsibility that Adobe feels to its users is strong. And we on the product side feel it every day. Mm, you mentioned there around around releasing features regularly, and then before that, you were talking about uh, you know new ways of approaching design and, and using possibly sound design a little bit more. Um, I, th I think totally agree in terms of some of the some of the kind of just talking about the platforms in particular, Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. Um, there's not a great deal of, of of examples of where sound design has been used um, really, really well. There's some more recent ones that are, that are you know more better examples, but um, on an audio first kind of platform and audio first medium, then sound is is the most important thing, isn't it? So, as part of those feature releases and as part of kind of constantly releasing new updates and things like that, is sound design part of that obviously you've got a t spe uh, text to speech and speech to text kind of engine in there that produces audio but in terms of kind of designing those um you know storyboards with the voice interaction is is sound design and using audio files and, and all that kind of stuff is all of that part of xd or is that something that you'd have to do elsewhere so currently adobe xd does not support audio files it weighs on me every day. <laughs> we are racing to build that functionality into the product because it, you need it. You need it to do voice design. You need it for a lot of other digital experiences as well, right? If you use Slack, the sound of the notification swiping in or the sound of, you know, a channel notification is a big part of that experience. And basically no design tools have good audio support. And when you look at a platform like, Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa, I don't think there are great examples of really well done. There are some, but I don't think for the most part, there are a ton of examples around well-designed experiences that incorporate nonverbal audio in a really strong way because designers don't have those tools, right? Now, of course, to a man with a hammer, everything is a nail. So I think design tools is the solution to uh, lots of product challenges. Uh, but until you give the creatives access to that, you're not going to see it bubble up in product experiences the way it needs to. I think that once we introduce audio files later this year into Adobe XD, you're going to see much better and much richer voice experiences, but I think you're also going to see much better and much richer digital experiences that don't incorporate voice. You will be able to think about those notifications. You will be able to think about how audio is a part of a digital experience in a kiosk. You know, it's, even if you're designing a screen for, you know, an ATM machine, the idea that at some point there's going to be a ding to remind somebody to take their card out of the machine is an important part of that experience. And as a designer, you know, every screen has a, a designer behind it. And so even if you're a designer working on ATM machines, you don't actually have access to all the things you need to, to put together those experiences and to get feedback from everybody else. So, you know, I, we, we're, we're going to get that out the door. We're going to bring that support. And then I would hope, you know, six months from then, we would look back and we would have lots of examples on Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, really well-designed experiences that incorporate that kind of audio. Mm, yeah. I think having the sound design as part of the process is, 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 
kind of the main thing isn't it because at the moment you kind of create the dialogue and whatnot and then think about the uh soundscape and afterwards and then it's kind of like an afterthought which i'm sure sound designers are pulling the hair out with um but you obviously with adobe i mean you're thinking about things like premiere and audition i use audition for editing and mixing the podcast and i use premiere for uh youtube videos and stuff and it's so handy being in premiere and being able to hop into audacity uh, not audacity audition rather um to kind of work on audio while you're in the middle of video editing. So I can see, I don't know whether this is part of the plan or not, but I can see a way possibly of having audio production being part of the the prototyping process essentially because Adobe and the Creative Cloud have got the capabilities and the tools for you to not just grab audio files and throw them in, but to actually produce audio as you're prototyping potentially. It's a great example, right? I, I mean, the power of Adobe is the is the creative cloud, right? To have different tools that you need for different mediums that are super powerful, that you can't bring that level of power and bake it all into one product. So there should be support for audio files in Adobe XD. So you can incorporate that audio as part of the experience, but you shouldn't need to edit or mix or do any of that stuff in XD. Audition's the place to do that, right? So the example that you use of, of using Audition for audio, uh, of the video that you have in Premiere, you could see the same thing of how you would use Audition for all the atmospheric design that would be part of, you know, Adobe XD for a voice interface. Um, you know, even something like AR and augmented reality, there's, we hear a ton about that. There's a ton of focus on it. AR is not going to be silent, right? There is going to be sound that's part of those soundscapes. There is spoken audio that's going to be part of those experiences. There's nonverbal audio and dimes or you know, chimes and dings that are going to be part of that as well. And you kind of don't even really hear about it, right? Every time you see a video of an AR experience on Twitter, there's no audio to it. And clearly that's not how these experiences are going to flourish and go mainstream, right? So I think that as you can wire up all the tools that creatives need to create that stuff, the work is going to get much better. And so I think, you know, you, the reason we joined is I think Adobe is uniquely qualified and uniquely positioned to be able to deliver that cloud of tools that you need in order to uh, bring the, the, the power that you need to sort of each piece of that to pull it together to make a great experience. How does, and I don't know whether you, you've probably got experience of this obviously with Sayspring and stuff, but in terms of the, the work that you're doing with XD, whether, whether or not this has come about or not, but thinking about further down the line then, once you've kind of prototyped out your kind of voice experience and whether there's audio in there or not or whatever you've kind of you've mapped out the storyboard and you've got it to a point where um you know you're kind of happy with it i mean me and dustin and we've mentioned it a few times on the podcast about kind of having the team of people work on it and having the, having a developer involved as early as you can do uh how does the kind of process work in terms of taking it from prototype to development is it a case of there's literally a clean handover and a hard handover so to speak or is there a way of um, merging the two and whether it's with xd or not but you know in xd is that is that something or not or if not how do you kind of recommend going from that prototyping phase with an xd to kind of developing something production ready a lot of times when we talk about workflow processes, we tend to mix the, the people with the process. So I think developers as people should be part of the stakeholder conversation and the feedback and the iteration from minute one, right? And so being able to, as a designer, go in, create the initial thinking, create interactive prototypes, being able to share those interactive prototypes with other people and get feedback really early on so that, you know, if you have a web experience and you're putting lots of stuff in a modal, the developer can come back and say that modal is going to be hard to implement the way you're designing it, or that's a great animation that will take a lot of effort to simulate that animation in production. And so to get that feedback early, it gives you as a designer a lot more control over what the end experience is going to be because developers aren't put in the position of having to make compromises through their part of the process. So I think the, the people who are all going to be touching this should be involved at every step of the way. I think when it comes to the actual work part of it, 
that there is some handoff that happens. So I, as a designer, have gotten it this far. And then the next step is to hand it off to development and begin development. And on the same side, I should be part of that process as well. Uh, and I think teams need to find whatever that point is that works best for them, especially in voice. It tends to happen, in my opinion, uh, earlier than you would do it in something like visual design. Uh, if you're designing a mobile app, you can get it pretty close to production level fidelity within the design process. And then when you hand it off, you're handing off the assets, the colors, the fonts, the padding, that kind of stuff. With voice, there's actually so much that is platform specific that I think getting it onto the actual platform that this thing is going to be rolled out on, on the devices that they're actually going to be spoken to, you know, in the environments that they're going to be spoken to is really important. There's a lot of nuance that happens in, in that part of the process for voice. So the soon, once you know what the user experience is, uh, anything that starts to feel like error handling or building utterance sets, that to me feels like you should do that in development because it's really, really specific to uh, the individual service or platform you're going to be building for, uh, you know, devices work really differently. If you have a voice experience on mobile, that microphone setup is very different than, you know, the seven microphones and Amazon echo has. So being able to get into that vi environment a little sooner than you would uh, for a different type of digital project, I think is, is super important, but that's for each individual team of people to figure out, you know, what makes sense for their organization and what is that right jumping off point. Is that what the Alexa integration will do then? You mentioned that at the start of the show. Is is that what that aims to do is to get that prototype onto an Alexa device for testing? Somewhat. Uh, until the moment that you start handing off assets from a platform like Adobe XD, it's pretty much a storytelling tool, right? You're putting together what the experience will be like. You're sharing that with people and getting feedback. You're doing user testing to see if it makes sense. Uh, and you're really telling the story of what the ultimate experience is going to be. Part of telling that story is almost getting people to suspend disbelief a bit, uh, to actually interact with it on the devices that they will ultimately interact with it on. So Adobe XD has apps for Android and iOS so that if you're building a mo mobile prototype, there are people who are going to want to experience that prototype on the actual device to see what it will be like when it's live and when it's real. Uh, the integration with Alexa is very similar. The idea of being able to go into a stakeholder meeting, into a client, and show that voice experience on the device is... It's powerful and it's captivating. We used to do this at SaySpring. Uh, when you would bring SaySpring connected to an Amazon Echo device into a customer meeting and you whip up a quick prototype and then you can talk to it on that device, people are wowed. Um, and so, you know, I think that using it for that part of the storytelling process is really important, uh, but troubleshooting it on the device in XD isn't the thing that you should be doing, right? Once you know what that experience is going to be like, and then you're working around all the edge cases and, and not just the happy path, that's when it starts to feel like that should probably be in Alexa Skill Builder or something else that is starting to use the actual platforms and, and technology that your ultimate experience will have. That's where it'll start getting... Um probably the platform specific stuff around all of the logic and stuff Dustin is that right in terms of um, you know rather than the happy path sort of in the error handling and the you know using various kind of uh, uh, you know custom variables or different kind of slot values and all that kind of stuff presumably that's easier to do building it yeah for sure I, I think it's uh, you know the tooling at the end of the day is, is specific to the different platforms but it's the same principles across all of those uh, so you're going to be, it sounds like creating a good uh, base for everything inside of Adobe XD before you start, you know, moving to the platform, like Mark said, and building that out. Yeah, one of the, one of the big beliefs, the, sort of one of the founding principles of SaySpring was this idea that the best experiences are built by teams 
that designers need the tools that they need and developers need the tools that they need their piece of the work and that when you don't have a very articulated opinion of what handoff looks like or what that blurry line looks like in between uh products become something that nobody wants to use i you know i've been in product design for 20 plus years uh there are tons of products that have tried to be sort of the one size fits all for everybody uh and i don't think they work you know say spring would never have in click to publish functionality because in order to do that you need to make the process way more complicated in a way that starts to not serve the the designer uh and so you know we've I think that's kind of the story of Flash, to be honest. You know, as an early Flash user, Flash was this amazing animation tool. That animation started to see its way onto the web, which led to people wanting more uh, functionality in it, which led to ActionScript, which led to ActionScript 2 and ActionScript 3, which were more and more complex. And then it made Flash just hard to use, right? Designers had a hard time getting done the work that they wanted, and they felt that stuff like animation uh, wasn't being fully supported. And then action script was just really becoming its own programming language. And to have that all exist in one product is tough. And so the idea of, again, to un unbundle that functionality into different products for different people, uh, I think is one of the advantages that Adobe has. And so we can deliver the product that makes sense for that user, but have an opinion of kind of where that process ends and when somebody picks up the baton. Cool. And where do you think where do you think it's all heading then? We've we've spoke a little bit about uh device specific stuff. We've spoke a little bit about hopefully that we can figure out as a community various design conventions uh that make things easier for users and, and easier for designers and developers. Where where are things moving to? You mentioned also some things around XD and what's coming up, like you know, ability to include sound files and stuff like that. That's probably a double barrel question in terms of what what's the future for Adobe XD and what's the vision and, and the roadmap for the, in terms of your plans? Not necessarily the details of that, but where do you see XD heading? And then where's the future of voice as, a, as an interface heading? Yeah, to... To answer the XD piece first, uh, XD has a few different, you know, uh, I would say, strategic directions that we're rolling in. Uh, so a big part of that is just collaboration. So if we believe that the best experiences are created by teams, that means multiple people need to be working on the same projects at the same time. We recently introduced something called cloud documents, where you essentially have your document up in the Adobe cloud, and then multiple people can all work in, in that same file. Uh, having a focus on things like design systems that, uh, you know, we have branding assets and graphics that are all, and, you know, eventually audio files that are part of our uh, visual language for an individual company. How do we share all of those things? Um, so there are pieces of that. And then, you know, on the, on the voice specific side, I think for us, you know, we've been hyper focused on just getting this into everybody's hands. And so I think our full you know, language rollout only happened about a month ago. So now we support every language that Adobe XD supports, which is about eight. Uh, but adding additional languages to open that up, you know, being able to put this on devices like Amazon Alexa, I wouldn't be surprised to see us support things like Google Assistant down the road as well. Um, and really, giving again you know not to just harp on that line but giving designers the the access that they need to do that work uh is where sort of xd in general is going and i think it's for for devices for the ecosystem to tell us you know what do what do designers need audio is becoming more and more pressing so we're going to need to do that uh incorporating video into your design and prototyping process is becoming more important uh so i wouldn't be surprised to see us do that kind of stuff as well and then the future you know who knows what ar starts to look like designing and prototyping for ar is going to be a process that we push on and advocate we have a whole initiative and in, in our own tool project arrow around that stuff uh but where is xd's role in that i think that's for us to to help define and then for voice broadly, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, am I going to be one of those people that makes all these ridiculous <laughs> predictions and then none of them come true? I don't know. I, I think that, you know, I, we, I kind of go back and forth with thinking um, that maybe I have a really good viewpoint on all this stuff and, and maybe I don't. Maybe, you know, the, the creative community will help define all this stuff. Uh, that's the big, the big thing that I've been uh, harping on lately, though, is that, that it feels like we're getting something wrong about the voice platforms that with 80,000 Alexa skills, there should be quote unquote more hits in that. And there are a bunch of hits. I don't, you know, if you saw the recent Bloomberg article and there was no big breakouts, I don't believe that necessarily. But when you look at the ubiquity of these voice platforms and the amount of use cases that most people use them for, which isn't many, it's, you know, weather, music, all the kind of stuff we've been doing from the beginning, it feels like something is off to me. It feels like we haven't cracked something because if a platform has that kind of ubiquity and that uh, level of like reduced friction to interact with it, it should be used for a lot more stuff. And, you know, again, I, I think it's because designers haven't been part of that conversation and, and haven't had the right tools. Um, but it, I, I feel like in a couple of years, we're going to look back at sort of these early days of voice and almost kind of laugh that we thought that this conversation paradigm was the right one, that things like, should you say thank you to Alexa? I feel like that one is, I feel like that one is going to be one of the most ridiculous things in the world that <laughs> and, and anybody was like, should we thank a like, we don't thank the dishwasher when the dishwasher does its job. <laughs> so the fact that we have to thank an inanimate voice service uh, for doing something, I think is a little ridiculous. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 my only prediction is I don't think we figured it out yet. And I think that in a few years, when we look back, we're going to realize that there was a, a, a couple of things that were indicating the right direction, but what we were thinking it was going to look like was wrong. Mm, I think you made a few good points there. Like, I think, um, what are your thoughts, Dustin, in terms of, is it a design issue? Is it a platform problem? What do you reckon? You know, I was thinking about this today, and I'm so happy you said this, Mark. Uh, you know, you see a, a lot of people complaining that the platforms aren't giving us enough uh, enough traffic, right? Uh, Alexa is not sending enough traffic to third-party skills. Uh, Google Assistant isn't doing the same. But you think about the beginning of the web, uh, you know, 20 years ago, there weren't many... Uh, good ways to, to send traffic that way either. Google hadn't really come around yet to, to be this behemoth. Facebook wasn't around either. People were going to these websites because they were discovering them through word of mouth and the, wor the websites were providing something interesting. Uh, and I, I like the fact that you're not, uh, not, cre uh, not providing any bold predictions, but instead it sounds like you're keeping your heads down you're listening to what the community is doing and, and trying to reflect uh, what's actually happening out there, what's needed out there. Yeah, I mean, the expectations around traffic and performance is a good one, right? There's a, not to be cynical, but when, when we see people launch skills that then don't work well and complain that traffic wasn't sent to them, it kind of reminds me of somebody who had you know, their blog, who posted their blog and then complains nobody's reading their blog. Like, it's your responsibility <laughs> to get people on your blog. You know, talk to an iOS app developer and, you know, you throw out a mobile app there, 90% of apps in the iOS store, like, never get touched. Um, it's not the responsibility of the platforms to, to bring you your users. Uh, every early ecosystem feels that way. Um, but ultimately, you as a creator need to create a good experience that's worth using and you need to find out how to get people there, right? Voice is no different. There's a lot about voice that I, and you know, maybe this is the grumblings of an old man, but there's a lot about voice that feels like not that new, right? That take, look at mobile, look at the early days of the web, look at different, you know, app ecosystems. Like we've all, we've seen this story before. So I don't, I'm not sure why people think it should be super different. Uh, and, you know, especially on the design front, if you have 
you know, a development first strategy to your mobile app, it's not going to be very good. It's going to be the same with your voice app. Wicked. Well, we'll end it there. Mark, this has been an absolute pleasure. It's been such a stimulating uh, conversation. And Dustin, I think we've kind of taken the the thinking forward there, haven't we, I think, at the end? Yeah. Mark, I think this was really great. I think you brought a fresh perspective that we haven't heard a lot. And clearly you've been successful in this space and you are deeply invested in it. So thank you so much. Great, yeah. Thanks for having me. This was this was a ton of fun. I'm sold on XD as well. I've actually got Creative Cloud. Obviously, I use it for the podcast and all that kind of stuff, and I've yet to venture down the XD route, so I'm definitely going to be checking that out. Uh, Mark, where can people uh, either go and find XD or where can people, I know you write uh, blogs every now and then on, on this kind of stuff, where can people kind of check out uh, and follow the XD journey or even yourself online? Yeah. A great starting point is if you just Google Adobe XD, you'll find you know, our website, you'll find our, the Adobe blog where that content is. Uh, you could follow Adobe XD on Twitter. The Adobe XD team in general is oddly uh, active on Twitter. Uh, all of us are on Twitter all the time. If you look at the hashtag Adobe XD, you will find our entire senior product team, lots of our engineers, lots of our uh, designers. Uh, so it's a great place to interact with there. I'm on Twitter at Mark C. Webster. Um, that's it's it all comes back to Twitter for me so that's probably the best place to go for that kind of stuff fantastic Mark it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much for taking the time to do this and yeah all the best with XD in future and hopefully we can do this again sometime I appreciate that yeah I hope so that was Mark Webster now of Adobe such a fascinating chat that and you know Mark has been nostril deep in this scene for a long long time and the knowledge he's got is absolutely unbelievable Dustin hit the nail on the head at the end there and said that Mark's been kind of head down cracking on churning out this uh, the functionality on Adobe XD and I cannot wait to check it out I can't believe I haven't checked it out yet um, you know I've got the creative cloud I've got XD sitting here on my computer probably and I've never got around to using it yet so that's probably the thing I'm going to use on the next project is, is getting uh, uh, getting deep into XD it sounds like a really fascinating tool coming soon uh, coming up with uh, Alexa support integration as well as uh, audio sound file support as well and he did drop a little bit of a hint about the roadmap and said that Google Assistant support might be coming soon he also dropped another hint about what might be coming up in the roadmap in terms of integrating it with other Adobe products like Audition so that seems to be, you know, up there with, with one of the best design tools I've heard of. Can't wait to check it out and, you know, do check it out yourself as well. I'm sure you'll know where to find it, Adobe XD. Really interesting thoughts on the way voice is unfolding as well and, and the fact that there's a lot of skills repeating the same kind of um, same mistakes, really, in terms of, you know, all having a really standard welcome and having a really flat design. And, uh, you know, when I say flat, I mean kind of like boring and mundane, not flat as in, uh, you know, architecturally flat so really interested to see how Adobe XD can help solve that and the concept of storyboards and situational design sounds like uh, a really good way of starting that uh, that challenge or starting to tackle that challenge uh, and then you know the observation at the end there if I think Mark Mark's just a realist I think that's what it is you know he's working on trying to solve these design challenges and not really thinking too much about where voice is going to end up because I think that's the one thing that we can fall into that trap on isn't it is we can try and you know predict and forecast that voice is going to revolutionize life and it's going to be you know absolutely everywhere and all this kind of stuff but I think Mark's focusing on really on on solving the problems and the challenges of today you know uh, four years in 80,000 skills in the skill store uh, and it's still still struggling to get people into them, still struggling to get people to engage with them and return to them. So he's right. There is some there is some challenges. There is some problems, um, and you know we need to start trying to build more impressive stuff, build more useful stuff, more engaging stuff, and start trying to make these platforms provide value to people. Thank you, Mark, for taking the time to speak to us. It was absolutely immense. Thank you, Dustin, as always, for co-hosting. And boys and girls, thank you all for listening. Until next time, see you later.